It's a pleasure to be here. Let me see if I can operate the technology. No, it doesn't work. How about that? Yes. All these slides that you will see are uh, openly licensed. And uh, some of the images on them, however, are uh, through fair dealing, uh, fair use in the United States. Um, start off to give a description of uh, our background is uh, um, I'm the editor of uh, EROTL, the International Review of Research in Open and Distributed Learning. I believe it was one of the first uh, um, open access journals in North America in uh, 2000. And uh, uh, it, uh, it's, it's now ranked fourth of all ed tech journals in our field, ed educational technology and distance education. It's fifth of all educational journals, according to Google. Uh, high, for, for our field, high uh, H5, 5 index. And it's the only open access journal in the top 20 education uh, uh, journals. And it's the highest ranked Canadian education journal. So we've been around for a long time. Um, last year, we had 800 submissions. And uh, it broke our back. Um, our copy editor said she'd quit. So we had to do something about it. We closed down for four months, and now we're going to accept. Uh, uh, we accepted 80 articles last year. We're going to limit it to 40 articles a year, and we have to do that. But part of the problem is that uh, throughout the world, they've gone into this ranking system, and they're telling faculty that they have to publish three articles a year in SCIS journals. Our, ours is in, in Scopus, World of Science, and all of those. It's very, very highly ranked. And uh, so we're getting a flood of people who are desperate to get published. And it's a big mistake, by the way. Uh, the highest, uh, the best researchers I know in the field publish maybe one a year. So it's a strange uh, phenomenon. Anyway, you all know the ring around with faculty and giving the journals uh, your, your stuff. I'm not going to get into that. <clears throat> uh, but I'm going to talk about free accessible content. And we do know that the internet is the biggest commons, and that the public domain is a price, priceless shared heritage. All knowledge is based on other knowledge. There's no such thing as pure originality. Copyright, what does it mean? Well, with the statute of Queen Anne in the uh, English uh, common law tradition, copyright was instituted to encourage learning and promote the progress of science and the useful arts. It was not put in to protect the rights of the author. Now, in the European tradition, they do have that, protecting the rights of the author. That is not in the uh, Anglo-Saxon position. Jazzy calls this uh, idea that it's there to protect the rights of the author as uh, paracopyright copyright or pseudo-copyright. The threat to all the big publishers is free content. They are deathly afraid of all this free content that's coming about. Um, luckily, we're getting a, a kickback against the big publishers. Uh, the University of California boycotts uh, Elsevier over journal costs in open access. And now I believe there's about 20 or 30 uh, libraries around the world who are boycotting it. In Canada, I think the first was uh, uh, Université de Montréal and uh, Laval University. So uh, this is growing, and it's a great trend. I encourage librarians to push it strongly. And why is that? Is because there's been a big consolidation in the publishing industry where a lot of small players are now becoming just one big one Elsevier with a few minor ones around it. And they don't want to, they want to leave the minor ones around it because otherwise they would be a monopoly. As it is now, they have an oligopoly and they feel safer with that. Now, what's a fair profit margin? Elsevier last year's profit margin, 35%. The profits of Elsevier, if you look down and you compare them with uh, Apple, 23%, oil and gas, 7%, uh, Wells Fargo, 27%, and uh, Elsevier, right up 40%. 
35 to 4. It's one of the most profitable, if not one of the deep most profitable industry in the world. And why? Because we give them everything for free. We pay, they pay nothing. In fact, now they support gold open access. And now not only do we not give it to them for free, we actually pay them to support open access. So what's happening is they're on a gravy train with all of this uh, uh, funding um, that they're getting from us. And uh, they're going to stick with it as long as possible. I mean, $10 billion in profit. I mean, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has only $4 million. 590 million National Health Medical Research Council. You go down Research Council UK 3 bill. They're way ahead. They're making a fortune. I think uh, uh, it was around two and a half uh, million pounds that the president of Elsevier made last year. Like, we're giving away our stuff. They're making a fortune of us. You know, and forget, if you look at the publishing industry, forget about Harry Potter. Forget about Fifty Shades of Grey. These are peanuts. <laughs> this money is peanuts compared to what they're making off of us. They're making a fortune. It's, uh, and they're squeezing us like this. I know you have more money than that. They try to figure out how much money your university has, and they push up their prices to meet with that. Uh, they're having a bit of trouble, though. They get a Swedish court order, and uh, they've been blocked. And so things are happening. I like to see that somebody is uh, doing something about it. It's all about ownership and control. Open access is the way we need to move. And I, I'm sure everyone here is convinced we need to move this quickly and forcefully and just get away with it. Um, let them keep all their copyright regulations. If education moves to open access, we can just bypass it. We don't have to uh, deal with it. Um, uh, as a sample, in uh, Crossref, 28% uh, uh, of articles, 45% are in unpaywall. Unpaywall is 47% recently accessed, and there's 18% more citations than in the paid journals. Sherpa Romeo is another one. I'm not, I don't have time to get into the detail, but another one where we can see that open access is a benefit. Open access policy, which open access policy? And you can see there's different ones. There's the green, the blue, the yellow. Wait, and I only heard about diamond open access yesterday. I'll have to find out more about it. So what are the solutions? Well, there's the LibGen solution. Its main focus is the distribution of its own library infrastructure, including its source code, catalog, and terabyte size collection to anyone who wants to start his or her own library. So we can go to LibGen and just start our own. Or we can go to SciHub. And SciHub is removing all the barriers in the way of science. Um, what does it do? It brings knowledge to all. They're fighting inequality in knowledge access across the world. Um, they don't accept copyright. And it's uh, fully open access. However, it is illegal in many, if not most, or even all jurisdictions uh, in the world. Um, I would recommend anyone to uh, uh, look up uh, Alexandra Albakian's name on YouTube and listen to uh, her uh, description of how she got into uh, the SciPub. And it's in, it's in Russian, but they have subtitles. So it's a, a very interesting uh, description. And basically what she says is that she could not, she was in uh, microbiology, and she could not get access to the journals. Her, her Ukrainian... Uh, um, uh, university could not afford to pay for access to them. <clears throat> so what she did was she contacted colleagues in other universities and they'd copy and send the articles to her. And then she thought, you know, this is ridiculous. These should be available to all researchers everywhere. And uh, she then started asking them. To, she, she created a program to go to 
uh, uh, different libraries and uh, download all the articles. And she got in through many different friends who remain unidentified, and she's downloaded millions of articles. And what we have now, it's the first pirate website in the world to provide mass and public access to tens of millions of research papers. And uh, we're talking about uh, more than 70 million research papers. That's uh, quite a heavy load. And the solution, they have 85% of all toll access journals. And in the web of science, they have 97.8% of all the journals. And it's growing. They've been successfully sued by two major publishers. Uh, they can't find her, so she's not paying. I, I fear that someday they will find her. But she has contingencies. Interesting, 85% of all articles. And not only that, they're the most recent articles. They've got them all. Like the ones that are missing are some very old articles that uh, haven't, haven't made it into the uh, uh, database. So it's pretty comprehensive. So when I'm looking for an article, I don't go to our library. I have to sign into my university. I have to sign into the library. I have to go find which uh, uh, directory it's in, and then I find my article. In Sci-Hub, I just type the name of the author or the title, a few words from the title, and it comes up instantaneously. I've consulted with lawyers in Canada, and they tell me that uh, if you have a, if your university has a license to access a particular uh, article, and you, are, you access it, there's no problem whether you get it from Sci-Hub or anywhere else. And, and uh, their reaction was, why would they want to stop you from doing that? Uh, you, you, you've paid for the access to the article, or your, or your institution has. And uh, for me, I have never used it to pirate, because uh, all, of, all of the articles I'm looking for in, in my field, uh, we have the journals in our uh, in our library at our, our university. Social sciences, 48,000 journals, 4.9 million of 5.9 million articles, 82%. Psychology, 82.9%. Um, this is a huge boon for people in developing countries. I'm the uh, uh, UNESCO International Council for Distance Education Chair in Open Educational Resources. And my job and my main responsibility is to spread the word, awareness, help people implement open educational resources, particularly in developing countries, as part of SDG goal number four, the Strategic Development Goal Four, Education for All. And in developing countries, um, they need Sci-Hub. They rely on it very heavily. Everywhere I go, and I've been, I've been to more than 25 developing countries, everywhere I go, they do. Sci-Hub has saved thousands, if not tens of thousands of lives by doctors in developing countries who've been able to access articles uh, that they couldn't otherwise have done so. And you can see by the red spots of where people are in the world, who are accessing uh, uh, the database. So they call it theft. But to me, this is theft. Removing millions of texts from the public domain is taking something away from the public. Um, th they've extended copyright uh, continuously. From the beginning, it was 28 years, 14 years and 14 years, to 50 years, and now 70 years. In Canada, we're still at 50 years, but there's a, uh, a bill coming up that uh, they're going to extend it to 70 years in order to agree 
um, with the United States and Europe. And uh, so we will be in that. Taking those texts away from people and putting a license on them is theft. So when they talk to us about the ethics of piracy and theft, we can talk back to them and tell them what real theft is. And I'll, fall, I'll close off with this uh, statement. If enough food was available for everyone and it was free, is it ethical to deprive the hungry? If enough knowledge is available for everyone, is it ethical to deprive those who thirst for knowledge? What they're doing is they're deliberately closing off knowledge from everyone. And there is no way that this can be considered ethical. So I'll finish with that and open it up for questions. I'm sure everyone doesn't agree, but 